Good evening, good evening, everyone. Okay, welcome to the hundredth video in my complete video series on misconceptions in physics. I was awaiting for this particular day because you know uh, I never thought that I would make up so much videos. It all started with just a small story wherein uh, we teachers as such, physics group of teachers, we used to talk and along with my students. Uh, the question that we had was like, uh, why do we need to have our something called as misconceptions? And before this, it started something like, see, there are lots of content materials available. Okay. And then I also start of, start, start, start of, uh, starting a startup and developing content material and having uh, my own system of tuitions and so on. And as a result of this, uh, um, initially someone asked me, sir, what is it? What could be the difference between your uh, way of teaching and uh, eminent people like Baijus or Topper or anybody else? Now, how does it differ? Then I did not have any answer. I said, okay, maybe I could involve, I could put across more number of numericals. Okay, I could explain the topic appropriately and so on. But everyone does it. So if you take up the number of numericals, H.C. Verma has every chapter, it has around 50 numericals. I think if you solve so much numericals, it's more than sufficient. And as a result of it, that was not the answer to be expected. But now the question was, what is the USP of your course? How do you how do you teach students or what is the what is the way? How do you sell your course? And as a result of this, then we thought, okay, we should uh, not only make a student understand the concepts, but at the same time, we should also help a student in understanding why a particular concept should be used in a given context and not in the other places. So towards it, we need to have some examples. Now, when we say we are designing, we are defining some concepts, we always teach right things. We never teach wrong things. But now how about making a mistake and then asking the question, why did you commit this mistake? Now, for that, I should make a mistake, right? Now, how do I make a mistake? See, if given a problem, I know how to write it correctly, how to give an, give an answer correctly. But how do I get to know like how to answer not correctly or how to answer it incorrectly? This was a big problem. But as I already told you in my few previous videos also, I have a hobby of collecting problems which students feel it very difficult. I make it as an index and see to it that, okay, so these problems the students were not able to answer. And uh, I used to have a collection of these problems. Then I thought, why not I just go to my previous images that I have just photocopied it. And when I saw that, then I realized that uh, one question, there could be in a given test, there could be one question, which most of the students have answered incorrectly. And then we thought, okay, why not? And why they have answered incorrectly? Because they have not learned the concept appropriately. Or maybe they got confused with these concepts. So how do I make these students come out of it? If I'm able to rectify their mistakes, I think that's more than sufficient. Okay, so to teach them. So then we thought, okay, why not we have something like a paid course for this? And towards it, uh, a few of my students suggested, sir, you can charge some money for this and only the student will be interested. I started with it as usual. But uh, unfortunately, uh, not many takers were there. The reason is because I was not teaching anything like concepts, not any derivations, not any numericals. And it was only about misconceptions. You make a mistake. Now, how do you rectify that mistake? Or what made you to commit that mistake? These are only three things that were answered. So then I thought, okay, so why not I give it on a trial basis? So towards it, so I thought, let me give this for some time. I start off starting something like first 10 videos. Earlier, I had only something like six subscribers, not more than that. Okay, and then I, then I started putting across these kinds of videos and putting it across, sharing it across between several uh, social media and as well as in LinkedIn and other places. Then several teachers got interested and they started subscribing and they referred to the students. Okay, I came to know that one of the teachers from Hyderabad in a government school, he started using these videos Okay, and was showing to the students like, okay, how mistakes happen and how to solve this. And he personally called me up. Okay, Rafiq, for example, he called me up and he said, so this is what it is uh, and uh, your videos are very helpful. Thank you, Mr. Rafiq, if you are watching this video. Uh, it was really a booster for me because when, when I initially saw only six students, eight students and so on, it did not grow. 
But now you know what is my total subscriber count. It is 122. My God, I never even imagined. In a, in a duration of such a small duration of around three months, okay, I reached to a count of 122 subscribers and several likes. So thank you all for subscribing to my channel. So then I thought, okay, let it be free and let me continue with this. Of course, in the due duration, I am adding some more problems. Maybe another 100 also might be free. And later on, okay, it will be priced. So that's what I have thought of. I thought of uh, adding some tutorial videos on uh, uh, what do you call on concepts, okay, how to arrive at uh, numericals of JE problems, JE advanced problems, problems for IBDP. In fact, I'm going to start something specially for the IBDP initially because I have been teaching for IBDP, that is the International Baccalaureate Program for the past two, three years. So I think uh, let me begin with IBDP initially, which is quite easier to do it also conceptually. There are lots of questions one needs to look at. And uh, students jumping from MYP to IBDP is really a quantum jump for them. So towards it, this is what I'd like to start with. Uh, shortly, in maybe another uh, uh, a month, uh, maybe this batch, it may not be useful. Maybe in another month or maybe not in a month. Okay, I think I need to design all this and then put it across. It might take, I need some time to do it. In the month of uh, April, I think I'll be hosting the complete uh, tutorial set, like what the other e-content developers are doing and put it across. So this is what is my plan. So there we will be having sections like, uh, will we have sections for uh, the concept and then we'll be having uh, separate videos for numerical solving. And then we'll also have it for past these papers. And finally, I will also have uh, maybe one or two sessions. Okay, usually all these will be recorded sessions. Okay, so similar to what you are thinking, uh, in thinking does or maybe the donors uh, physics website does it and so on. Okay, so uh, this will also be a recorded session where one can purchase it. Okay, the moment I purchase, people think hey, he is commercializing. Everyone has to commercialize it, right? Why do people do videos on YouTube? The reason is only to commercialize, right? I also do it because I have, I will have a large number of subscriber count. Okay, and as a result of it, slowly, okay, I, I can easily monetize it. Okay, the very purpose of using YouTube is only this. Of course, I do service. That's the thing wrong, but. Uh, somewhere money should also pour in. Only then that will be an uh, what do you call it? an appreciation or maybe okay my my financial stability would also be taken care of, right? Okay, so towards this is what I'm going to do. And in the month of April, definitely okay, a video would be posted on YouTube regarding the course content. What is that I have developed so far and so on? I already started with these lectures. Ha! Huh, one more thing is my lectures will never have anything like attractive animations putting across lots of uh, music and other things because I feel uh, the moment you put across all those, you know, it takes a long time and the cost on production of this will take a long, very, will be very expensive. And in that case, I need to charge a lot. Okay, I, I don't believe in uh, something like uh, uh, charging something like $200 or $250 and so on. Of course, okay, it will, it will minimum be for physics, at least it will be around Hundred dollars is definite for it. Okay, it will not be lesser than hundred dollars because it should also help me out in doing it because I cannot expect okay one twenty one people to purchase my videos, right? It's not possible. So uh, maybe out of one twenty, uh, if there are something like around twenty students who purchase it, uh, then definitely it's a it's a good amount for me. So that's what my plan is. So see you guys. You can also you, you will be using my material if someone purchases it. Um, yeah, that's it. Now let us begin with the 100th video on misconceptions in physics problem solving. Okay, now towards it, now what are we doing? We are doing questions from forces. We are not completely gone out of mechanics. We're still into mechanics. Okay, now let us start with it. Now, if you want to look at all these videos and the future videos also, you can visit to my website, which is held at rathankar.com. Right, now let us start with this. So sorry, the previous slide, I put NLM, it's not LNM now. It's about the forces that get distributed. There are several problems like this, wherein um, the main concept is being taught here and you need to apply these concepts, okay, in the other problems. Now, this is also an IBDP problem. A constant horizontal force, at a yeah, let's make pen. Yeah, a constant horizontal force is, F is applied to a block Y. So you apply a force Y here, there's another block X which has been attached. What force acts on it? Very simple. Okay, the student response given to this is, same force acts on x and y 
since the bodies x and y are connected bodies x and y are connected some same force should also act on x also so the same force should act on x also this is similar to connected objects that have the same speed so the student said that okay if you have two objects which are connected something like let us say okay i have i have uh, two railway bogies two railway bogies and now what he feels is that okay so now if i apply a force and let us say this is moving with a velocity of 3 meter per second this should also move at 3 meter per second only okay, how can it differ right and at the same time he also says sir if that is the case if this changes its velocity this is also changes the velocity and if if change in velocity corresponds to acceleration then you should have the same force over here now what you need to look at is now let us understand what happens over here now i agree with this student let me consider let me do a small what you call a mathematics behind it this is a misconception there is a misconception here the same force does not act on both objects let me tell you how to, what happens over here now logically let us understand what it is then mathematically i will prove that his statement is incorrect okay logically logically let us say first one now let me give you a logical understanding first one now let us say the mass of this y big y is a bigger object let us say mass of it is something like uh, 10 kg and the mass of this is 5 kg you apply a force of 10 newton now who will move faster is it x or y definitely y will move slower and x will move faster okay which means what do i what do i say is that if i take an object of 10 kg apply a force of 10 newton if i take another object of 5 kg and apply the force 10 new 5 newton then who will move faster this is a question i asked definitely 5 will move faster as compared to the 10 newton force which is 10 will move slower now if that is the case when i apply this force 10 newton and according to the student let me assume the same 10 newton is acting here also then what will happen now as this force is applied this 10 newton will move slower 5 newton this 5 kg will move faster which means the moment you apply this force then what should have happened that this 10 kg object would have been here and the 5 kg object would have been here what does it mean that means immediately when you apply a force they say mass separation should have taken place right the object separation should have taken place is this happening have you ever noticed i take two objects nearby I keep it attached to it and i apply a force do you think that these two will separate this will never separate it goes hand on hand over right which means this concept is incorrect now what should happen that's the next question we should ask now we should say maybe if 10 newton is applied here i am not applying the object x which is 5 kg is not getting the same amount of force it's getting a lesser amount of force which is not sufficient for the object to move away from here can we say that now who should give the force this object should give the force the object y should give the force until another object y does not give the force x will not move okay definitely x is getting a force the 5 kg object is getting a force only from y so definitely the force is not zero but at the first same time force is also not equal to 10 newton why not 10 newton because he is already getting a force of 10 newton and if this applies a force of 10 newton this will start moving faster which means the force on x should be lesser than the force on y right so what force should act on x it should be lesser than x now we need to find what's the value logically we have understood that the force should be lesser now let us understand mathematically how do you compute this now what we do is now what we have understood we have understood that the both the objects are connected together and they are moving when they are moving together what is our acceleration let us say this acceleration is a1 for this object this acceleration would be a2 okay now similar to this concept which means what a1 and a2 are they different or are they same they are definitely same right why are they same because both of them are moving to connect connected together they are connected like a string here there is no string here they are connected together when there is a change in velocity here there will also be a change in velocity over here correct so therefore i can now say a1 should be equal to a2 let me also write this equal to a a common value now let me find out this value f a so towards it what i do is i know that the net force f is equal to m1 plus m2 into a okay i have not given the values okay so therefore now i can now write a is equal to f divided by m1 plus m2 now how do i get this equation this is from newton's second law of motion right what does newton's second law of motion tells you it tells you f equal to capital m into small a right which is capital m is what the whole system over here so which is m1 plus m2 so a equal to f by m1 plus m2 now we have got the acceleration now what's the next question i should find what is the force here what is the force here 
Now the force according to Newton's second law. Once again, use second law only. Yeah, Newton is very powerful, you know. So the force according to Newton's second law at this point is nothing but F1. F is F is nothing but 10 Newton over here. Okay, we know. We already given this force over here. Now, next is, let me find out what is the force here. The force at this point is nothing but F2 should now be equal to M2 into A. Into A2, if you want, you can write A2. Uh, this should be equal to M2 into A. Now, what is the force acting on Y? This should be F1 should be equal to M1 into A1, which is nothing but M1 into A. Now, if I describe the whole thing, what is the total force acting here? F should be equal to F1 plus F2. Okay. Now, this is a very important statement. It gives you a shortcut here. The shortcut here is that when you apply a force of 10 Newton, this object is, it says, give me some amount of force to move. Okay. It takes up that object. It consumes that force. Okay. Let us say, for example, you are given 10 Newton. Let us say it consumes something like 6 Newton of force over here. Now, what is the remaining? 4 Newton. This 4 Newton is given to it. As simple as it. Now, when this mass becomes larger and larger, this takes up larger amount of force because it has to push it also, right? So therefore, because now how does it know that this mass is larger? Because where is it getting reflected? It is getting reflected here, right? See, when the mass M2 increases, the value of A decreases. When the value of A decreases, then definitely they were M2 into, sorry, M1 into A1. Now, sorry, uh, which one? M2 into A2 decreases. M2 into A2, because M2 is not decreasing. M2 into A2, which is M2 into A decreases. As a result of it, the rest of the force comes to F1 only. Thus, we can, so we can say that the forces gets distributed when the objects are connected. I hope you have understood this particular solution. Okay, how do you arrive at when two objects are connected? A very, very important concept. Most of the problems I have seen Okay, they make most of the students they make this particular mistake. Okay, see to it that okay. So these are some of the what I call it as the bricks of physics. So if you know these bricks, then definitely every problem that you solve will be much more easier. Thank you, friends, for watching. Do keep on liking, sharing, and subscribing to my channel for more of such updates. Thank you.